Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at weathering, specifically physical weathering and chemical weathering. So again, if you haven't uh, followed along your notes or taken notes on this, make sure you follow along and if you have any questions, you can ask me in class. Okay, so physical weathering versus chemical weathering. How exactly are we going to approach this? Well, first of all, what is weathering? Weathering is any physical or chemical change that happens on Earth. So now we're looking at rocks. We're looking at physical things you can go outside and actually see in real life. So what exactly is physical weathering? And sometimes, by the way, physical weathering is called uh, mechanical weathering, the same thing. So it's any change that breaks rocks into smaller fragments caused by factors in your environment. So you could be a factor in that environment. If you take a rock and you, you know, swing a hammer at it or something and break it into pieces, you would be taking part in physical or mechanical weathering. What is chemical weathering? Just like chemical changes, it is when you alter a rock and now you've made it into a new mineral, a new substance, a new rock, something that wasn't the same as the starting material. Okay, so let's look at some physical weathering. Now, there are a bunch of things that we're going to be looking at for physical weathering. So if you want to, I would spread these out like this. We have abrasion, frost wedging, thermal stress. We're going to define them. And especially for abrasion, there's going to be a lot of stuff under there, okay? Then for chemical weathering, we have oxidation, hydrolysis, and then we have carbonation. All right, let's look at, first of all, just physical weathering, and let's look at abrasion, since abrasion is such like a big one for us, okay? What is abrasion? It is any mechanical scraping. And think about all the different stuff in your environment that could cause that scraping, okay? You have wind. You have water or waves, you have glaciers, you have gravity, you have plants and animals, okay? These are all just different types of abrasion, um, or not different types, different things that cause abrasion, okay? Now let's look at some pictures and see if you can figure out what might be causing these forms of abrasion. Look at that picture, what do you think is causing that form of abrasion? That one's pretty easy, right? Obviously, that is a plant growing out of a rock, so that has to be caused by a plant. And how does that work? Think about it. Rocks are uneven. They have tiny little crevices. If a seed lands there and is watered enough, then you can get you know roots forming. And then before you know it, you have this giant thing breaking the rock into pieces. What about this? That's caused by wind. Especially, again, you see this in deserts a lot, but it's because when you get a big gust of wind, there are tiny little fragments of you know, sand in that wind. And so like little razor blades, they start to cut away at the rock. You get these crazy looking rock formations. What about this? That'd be caused by a glacier. You can see the trail of where the glacier moved or where the glacier was. That one's kind of hard to see. That's caused by gravity. Those are just rocks falling from a high place and breaking into smaller pieces. And last but not least, that is a beautiful cove, by the way, but that's what causes coves to form, is the splashing of the water and the waves cause these openings to form in the rock, and the rock starts to decay away and scrape away. Next up. Let's look at frost wedging. What is frost wedging? Well, that's when water expands as it freezes, and so it breaks rocks into smaller pieces. So if we were to look at that, here's a little diagram, right? You can think about like, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's not freezing outside, so water went through all these little crevices. But when it gets cold, that water expands. That's why ice floats. So when it expands, it starts to break apart the rock from the inside, and you get things that look like that. You get these cool-looking things. Where you get these giant rocks that have been split apart, and that's by frost wedging. What about thermal stress? Thermal stress is kind of like frost wedging, but it's the opposite. So thermal stress is when heat expands and contracts. So when it's hot, I know it doesn't look like it, but rocks expand when it's hot, and then they contract when it's cold. And so by doing that, they start to break themselves apart from the inside. So again, here you go. Here's a nice diagram. You have you know, the heat of the rock makes it expand. Then at night, it's cool. And so before you know it, you start to get like little bits of broken rock that break off because of that. And you get cracks in sidewalks caused by thermal stress. You've probably seen that before. You get these weird little things that look like, you know, oh, hey, that maybe used to be one big rock, but now it's breaking into little chunks. And again, frost wedging in the left. And then we've got thermal stress on the lower right. 
let's look at chemical weathering. All right, so oxidation. That's when oxygen combines with minerals to form new compounds. So we're looking at oxygen. Makes sense. It's oxidation. Oxygen, oxidation. So what does that look like? Well, it looks kind of like rust. So here are some rocks. It's a very low resolution image, but you can see that kind of like reddish orange stuff that's caused by oxidation because oxygen is turning that original rock into something else. What about hydrolysis? That's when hydrogen or hydroxide replaces an ion inside of a compound. And so when that happens, you end up with hydrolysis. So think hydro means water. What's water made up of? Well, hydrogen and oxygen. So you've got hydrogen and you've got hydroxide, OH minus. So that's how clay is formed. That rock in the upper left is what it looks like before hydrolysis. Then after hydrolysis, that's what it looks like. That stuff right there in the center, that's clay. Last but not least, carbonation. Carbonation is when carbon dioxide reacts with rain and it's caused by acids normally. So you end up with new compounds forming because acid is corroding away at it. The most obvious example of that are those cool stalagmites and stalactites that you see uh, inside of caves. Those are caused by carbonation. It's made out of limestone and it takes a really long time, but it's acid basically that's been eating away. And because of the you know carbon dioxide mixing with the water, making that acid, you end up with these cool rock formations inside of caves. All right. So that was it. If you have any questions, let me know.